Hey, ka, hey, ka, hey, ka, hi everybody! I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying a lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'm going to show you on how to set up your leap motion inside of Vineon. That way you can be able to have hand tracking done with high quality leap motion. Now, before we get started though, yes, you are required to have a leap motion device. Whether you're using the V1 leap motion, the V2 leap motion, the stereo, otherwise known as IR170 leap motion, which has, um which looks very tiny, or the 3DI leap motion. If you have any of those leap motions at all, then this tutorial is for you. If you don't happen to have those leap motion devices, you can of course order one. Do keep in mind, it's probably about like, uh, depending on where you're buying your leap motion, probably a hundred bucks you may have to save up to get at, uh, the devices. If you're going for a stereo uh, or IR170 or the 3DI, you'll have to save like 250-ish dollars. If you're going for the V2, that'll be 139 but if you're going for classic V1, you will have to get that in like eBay or something like that, which can be about $90 or if, depending on where you get it, if you're lucky, $40 or $50. So keep that in mind uh, regarding leap motion devices. But of course, you don't have to buy one. If by any chance you prefer to use webcam hand tracking, you can use programs such as Webcam Motion Capture, XR Animator, or you can use Vinyan's native webcam hand tracking that's all done within the app. I will leave in the description below for a webcam tutorial that I personally made that shows you guys how to set up webcam tracking for Vinyan. So you can definitely check that out if you prefer. Otherwise, though, we're going to continue on with the leap motion method. Now, first and foremost, what we're going to be doing is that you need to make sure that your leap motion is connected. Now, personally, me, I have my leap motion. Um, I have a neck mount for my leap motion. It was created by Rilo Knight or Rilo Knight, depending on how you pronounce their name. But they were the ones that made my neck mount. I'm using the V2 leap motion for this case, but of course, V1 also works as I've tested. You can, of course, if you don't happen to have a neck mount, you could use a 3D printed shirt uh, clip if you like. I don't recommend those, but that can be uh, something you could use. I personally would prefer anything chest or neck mount related, as that gives you the best hand tracking quality because it sees your hands much better, especially like if you want it where your hands are always on the keyboard and such, definitely recommend chest mount solution. There's also the a solution as well where you could mount your leap motion on like, let's say a gooseneck mount. So the iPhone gooseneck mounts, you could kind of DIY it to become a leap motion mount so it's over your uh, hands. You could do that. I That may take a little bit more tinkering to do, but otherwise that is another solution you can do. Now, of course, if you sadly don't have a chest, shirt, or um, neck, or any uh, sort of mounting at all, and you can only do desktop mount, just keep in mind, if you're going to do desktop mounted where the leap motion is only on your table, just know it is not going to track your, your hands on the keyboard, unless you mount it. So just keep that in mind. If you want your hands tracking on the keyboard, Make sure you have a mount, basically. I prefer neck mounts. You could definitely get one on ST. You could buy one there. Or if you have a 3D printer, you could 3D print one. There are STL files on Thingiverse, so yeah. Um, and of course, it's recommended to have, um, if you're using a V1 Leap Motion, it's recommended to have a USB, I think it was like a 3.0 or 2.0 or something. But 3.0 would be recommended, but for the newer Leap Motions, uh, 3.2 USB would be recommended. But either way, though. Uh, once you do have your Leap Motion connected, and I recommend using the Gemini V5 Leap Motion program, yes, you are required to have that program running whenever the Leap Motion is activated so it can work. Um, I will also say as well, uh, I will also leave a screenshot uh, right here. But on your Leap Motion program, once you have everything connected, uh, please make sure, depending on your mount solution, to mess with this exact setting. So if you're... Uh, a chest mounted user or neck mounted please set it to be chest mount if you're a desktop user or like putting it on the desktop uh, or I wouldn't say desktop but like you know your table if you're putting it on the table then put it as desktop mounted or something like that and then if you have it where um, I think there's a one that's called screen top this is mainly for if you have like the um, I think like the VR head mount and you have the leap motion angled or something like that you could have screen top, but again, you can experiment, but that's my personal recommendations. You have to mess 
with these settings in ult the Leap Motion program. Because if you don't, your hands are probably going to go wopsided. It's going to look weird. So trust me, you, you best be editing those settings and keeping an eye out for that camera to make sure things are looking good. Once you have that set up on your leap motion, what you're going to then do is that on the top right here, you're going to click on menu, then you're going to click on settings, then what you're going to do is that on your uh, tracking layers right here, you're going to scroll all the way down until you see leap motion tracking. What you're going to then do is you're going to click on use leap motion. Now as you can see, my hand tracking is quite struggling right now because as you can see, um, it's not set up properly. So if you are using desktop, so if your leap motion is on a table because you don't have a mount, please leave it at desktop. Now, if you are a head, you know, if you're going to be using like a shirt clip or chest mount related solutions or the neck mount that which I'm using, there is two modes, head mount A, mode A, and then mode B. Now, there is a little bit of confusion as to what the heck these two are. In summary, head mount B is primarily for rotation fixing, I guess. It's a really minuscule fix, to be honest. So honestly, these two kind of technically do the same thing. But this is more for like thumb fixes. So like if your thumb looks a little slightly weird, um, you may want to try head mount B and take a look to see if your thumbs are working well because head mount B is kind of supposed to fix your thumbs for the most part. While head mount A is kind of like the original settings basically. So just mess with your, um, you know, once you adjust all these sliders. That's kind of like the difference. Head mount B is supposed to technically quote unquote be better for the thumbs. Head mount A is just kind of the original. I personally have it as head mount B just in case you know the thumbs. But even then, I could probably have mine at A actually. I think it might work a little better. Ah. Whatever. But I will have mine as head mount, um, head mount mode B, honestly. Um, and I say head mount because that's technically what it stands for, even though I'm using a neck mount. But, you know. But I'll have mine as B. Screen top is referring to if you have, like, a VR uh, head mount, you may, you could, you I think you could be able to use the HMD, um, technically. I would probably recommend that. But, of course, if you're, like, really tall or something like that, um, or if it's angled in a certain way, you may want to have screen top. Uh, again, you could adjust the things. However, it depends on whatever your leap motion control panel shows. So whatever your, uh, con leap motion control panel on the settings, basically, um, whatever they do show, just copy that exact setting over to here, basically, for the most part, and you should be good. But once you have that, what you're going to then do is you're going to adjust the following sliders here. Position height is referring to your hands moving up and down. So basically, I would recommend probably around like 1.36 is my best one. But um, actually, I would adjust a little lower. But it depends on like how tall your model is, how long your arms are. You may have to adjust the settings accordingly. But these are the things that would be best recommended for the leap motion on you know the height, I guess. Depends on your model. Distance is referring to how far your arms are from your torso. So it depends on how um, far and back it is. Uh, usually 1 point, uh, 0 0.5 or um, just 0 is perfectly fine. Really just depends on your settings. Or you could do 0 0.05, whichever. Uh, remember you have decimals. You could definitely utilize that. So yeah. But either way, though, um, and also, by the way, as you can see, because of the neck mount, I'm able, my hands are on the keyboard right now, so I'm able to be able to have, like, the keyboard going on, basically. So I can be able to, like, do some typing because of the neck mount. So if you want that, neck mount. Again, you could 3D print, or you can definitely check out the person who made my neck mount, Relo Knight, uh, and definitely you can commission them if you like. But either way, what you're going to then do, um... Position left and right, this is mainly referring, I personally keep this at zero, but let's say you have a weird offset, like maybe your leap motion IRL is placed very awkwardly, and you need to adjust your settings. So like, let's say your leap motion IRL is tilted to the left side or right side, this is more so for correction. This moves your uh, hands left and right. But again, I personally recommend just keep it at zero, unless your leap motion IRL is tilted very weirdly. 
Um, besides that, though, hand uh, distance. This is referring to how far your hands are from each other. So this is very good if you want to have clapping. So as you can see, my hands are very far, despite my hands IRL touching. So uh, if you decrease the value here, it will allow your hands to be able to touch like this. So if you feel like your hands are too far away, this is what you'll do to adjust it so it looks much more nicer. See? Um, so there you go. Now my hands aren't really too far away, basically. So yeah. Scaling, this is referring to if your model is way too tiny, like a chibi model, or way too giant, probably because you did some scaling issues in Unity, especially if you're, you just made your model too giant, mayhaps. Um, this is primarily useful uh, if you want to do like that adjustment depending on how big your model is. Personally, I have my scaling at uh, just one. I leave it the way it is. But of course, depending on how big your model is, uh, if your hands are a bit too weird, you may want to adjust it depending on how tall your model is. Because sometimes you may be going from Blender to Unity and little did you know you did not use the height chart thing that's in DeviantArt that can help you out with correcting your height and your model is way too big so you gotta use a scale to make sure that it's done properly or maybe you made your model too small uh, under like like four feet or something like that or uh, no under five feet actually will probably be when the model starts getting a little problematic in terms of like how the eye cave and stuff works so yeah just watch out for that anyways though rotation this is mainly again for correction so if your hands uh, or your leaf motion IRL is way too lopsided, this is mainly served as a correction. I do not really recommend messing with these values at all, uh, but of course if you need like some fine tune adjustments mayhaps, uh, this could probably be pretty useful. And as you can see, um, for the most part it's like X is just rotating upwards basically, um, the Y is like kind of like rotates to the side here and then this kind of also does the same thing, but it's like depends on how you rotate, but yeah. But yeah, you can adjust it however you like though, but I recommend don't mess with these settings, honestly. Unless your Leaf Motion IRL is way too lopsided. Especially if you're a desktop mount user, you may have it slightly lopsided, you may need some correction. But again, if you have a stable mount, you should be fine. Mirror hand is primarily good if you want to have like that mirrored look. I personally prefer that mirrored look with my avatar, but again, um... It's a matter of preference. Um, sometimes the mirrored hands could be a little problematic at times, but that's now very rare as that has been fixed. So you should be good to use it, but it really just depends on you. Sadly though, in the making of this tutorial, there is no smoothness setting for the leaf motion. Many people have been asking for the smoothness setting, so I will say keep an eye out for future Vignan tutorial or tutorials updates because the thing is is that there is probably going to be a chance that in a future uh, update Vigna may have the smoothness slider so if it happens that in the future there is a smoothness slider then please keep in mind that if you have it just increase the value to increase your smoothness especially if you're trying to reduce some jitterness uh, with your hands so at best I would probably recommend if I'm in, under assumption 0 0.5 0 0.6 may be the best for your hand tracking but for the most part leap motion tracking should overall be smooth anyways it is just a matter of your lighting solution such I recommend don't have too much lighting with your leap motion though but also don't make it way too dark uh, to where it's completely black but even then um, just make sure you have at least some sort of balanced lighting don't overdo it or the leap motion will freak out so yeah. Besides that though, that's at least regarding the potential smoothness layer if that ever happens, which I'm pretty sure it may happen, but again, Vignon is going through a lot of updates, it's going to, going to go through a lot of changes, so please keep in mind about that. Track arms is basically if you are like a Macopi user or if you're a VR user that don't have uh, mocap gloves. This is primarily useful if you want to have the leap motion become your hand tracking um, or like your finger tracking but you don't want to have the arm tracking. So again, Makopi or VR users or full body tracking where you don't have the um, you know, where you don't have the hand tracking at all but you still got the arm tracking from other track, you know, the, depending on your tracking solution you can be able to disable it for that sort of case basically. And it'd be recommended because Leap Motion is definitely really good. 
Either way, though, is of course you can click on the question mark here. Uh, and as you can see, the mirroring is very experimental. So on rare, personally, I've ha I haven't gotten any more issues, but um, you may have some, you know, maybe have some rare issues, especially maybe with the arm sway node graph from Heavy. You may have some technical difficulties with the sway graph depending on your setup. But either way, though, you could definitely read that if you click the question mark. And for the most part, that's pretty much it in terms of the leaf motion tracking setting. And that should be pretty much that. Pretty much. Very simple. Um, if you have any other questions, of course, you can join the Discord server and report your issues if you are struggling. I do recommend if you are having a lot of leap motion issues, please contact the Ultra Leap devs. They are very active and they're also really nice. I've had my issue, I had an issue back then where my uh, leap motion would not connect because of a Unicode error. Um, they were really nice to have fixed that issue for me. So. Definitely, if you are experiencing leap motion issues, contact the support team. They're really, really nice, and they are happy to help you out or add any features you may want. Um, but otherwise, you could join Superdo Discord server, ask the community for some help, because it is community-based. So, yeah. Um, but otherwise, though, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope that this tutorial helps you out in terms of the leap motion. And I hope you guys have a lovely day, though. And I'll see you guys next time, okay? Heika, heika, heika. Bye bye, everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye bye. Thank you so much to all my Snowflake members. In case you don't know, I have YouTube membership, so if you want to get access to extra perks and further support me and what I do, then feel free to join the Snowflake membership. Otherwise though, just you guys watching is just enough support for me and I appreciate every ounce of it. So, either way though, I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!